Another thing I was fascinated with is I want to I want to talk about this show that we saw tonight, but also a little bit about um, what it's like to tour together as a group outside of the confines of uh, an institution in a in a larger sense. So, um, first, I would just want to start with the first piece. Uh, last year, you brought Jerome Robbins's Fancy Free, and this year, we see In the Night. And just could you say something about what it's like to bring a work that I think maybe was made well before any of you were born, and what it's like to <laughs> to, um, to to bring that work here. To bring a ballet like In the Night or any Robbins ballet or a Balanchine ballet, a ballet with a legacy mm -hmm. is a huge responsibility. Um, I have the honor of passing that on to the next generation. And I have that because many dancers and ballet masters and directors have done that for me and my colleagues. So when you try to bring one of these pieces, think about moving a very fragile piece of art in a museum. That's what it is. We're taking it from New York City and we're bringing it to other stages around the country. And it's, you don't want to just put it in a box with a little bit of popcorn. You've got to do all the packing precisely correct. Um, as you saw with In the Night, uh, the costumes are very specific. The backdrop is very specific. The lighting is very specific. Those all create the mood and the ambiance that I think Jerome Robbins always was so keen on and had such an attention to detail with. Um, in fact, I brought our ballet master from New York City Ballet to come on Wednesday night and just ask him his feedback um, because I want the piece to still be alive and continue to evolve and also, again, to be one of the trusted uh, liaisons of his work. Mm -hmm. So um, I pinched myself because I couldn't believe I, was, I have that in the in the repertory of Stars of American Ballet right now, and, um, and constantly trying to grow that out as well with Balanchine Ballets and Wielden Ballets and Peck Ballets, but you know, to have the titans of dance like Robbins and Balanchine and to say, we allow you to do that is the biggest honor in the world. That's great. Uh, Mara, I want to ask you about um, one of the things that is so striking in the second, uh, the second duet or pas de deux in, in Robin's work is that there's a real mood and tempo shift in that. And yeah. I feel like, you know, we, we have the opening uh, duet, which Sterling is in, I'm going to ask you about in a moment, but there's something so much about, like, we are sort of in this world and then the world changes. Yeah, Could you so just talk true. about what it's like to dance that? Yeah, well, actually, this was my debut here. Oh, I've never done it. So. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> and uh, it actually is actually uh, another great honor about it is I've gotten to perform all three part of this. So now I have had every kind of emotion that you have um, with the romantic part of it in the beginning and the kind of confident kind of I've been through it all part of it. That's how, that's how we were taught. It's like there's no, nothing new. This is a confident couple. But there is still kind of a passionate pull between that couple. And I think that uh, it's great to experience. And of course, the dysfunctional part of the, you know, I've done that and uh, I, I related more to that. <laughs> but, but this was actually, it was a great experience as an artist to take yourself through those different characters of, of love and relationship. And I think that it's a, it's a great moment. That's why I feel keen to when the music changes in that slow, confident, still, simple part of the, it shows that there's still love and passion and pull, no matter what you feel. So I, I uh, I really hat tip to you for putting Sea Change on the same program, the, the Peck piece. And Sterling, I want to ask you about that because to be in that opening, the romantic pas de deux, as Amar just <laughs> described it, in the Robbins piece, and then you have a kind of a different role in the Peck piece of being a little bit more of a siren. Um, yeah. Could you talk about the difference in, in how it is to be sort of pure and innocent and then maybe a little more seductive and fiery in the peck work? Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> um, well, in, in the night, my pas de deux is really about first love and when you first see each other and fall in love and how great those, you know, first, or it could always be great, but, <laughs> you know, that excitement and the butterflies and everything. And, and then in sea change, on the flip side, it's almost like the love disappears and, and you know, a couple has moved on to another, another mate. But you know, a thing I was thinking is you've selected these, um, and it feels like some nice chamber work, so we're not seeing a three x one leg or, or a, a, a corps de ballet, but we also have a smaller scale sense of music. You've got a violinist and a pianist, or just a pianist, and maybe you guys could all talk a little bit about what it's like to not have the full orchestra supporting you, but to just have that very close relationship um, with just a single musician, potentially. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
It just makes the whole relationship more intimate. I think it just, it's already created that way. I mean, we're, we're so used to the big stage, and but just being in this house alone, you can take a look out in the audience and see somebody's eye. It's, it's like, whoa, it shocks you, you know? You're not, I'm used to seeing black, you know? It's just like complete darkness. And um, so it already creates a kind of intimacy um, between the audience, the musician, and the artist. Mm -hmm. And, and everyone's a performer dancing. on stage. Right. Yeah. You know, the musicians, in the night, I can tell you, we wouldn't have done, done in the night without live music. Yeah. Le Luten does not work to a piano music. I've tried it, it doesn't work. It's horrible. <laughs> you know, you lose the relationship. And I think the thing with all of today, and I, I usually observe this when I watch a Robbins Ballet, is an atmosphere on stage. Yeah. There's always atmosphere on stage. And um, I think Sterling said it beautifully, and you had touched on this. When you watch Sea Change in the Night, it's almost as if you're watching a, a television. You know, you're watching them interact with each other. It's their relationship on stage, not the audience. And that completely changes with distractions and it completely mm -hmm. changes with Le Luten, um, the intention. And it's the same thing when you watch a balancing ballet. There's usually more of a presentation to the audience and the music. Straight and forward. here, you know, we're in the wings. I, this is a kind of behind the scenes thing. Uh, both the Engel brothers are very accomplished musicians and they're helping turn pages for our pianist and our musicians backstage. And I mean, Pretty to awesome. see them in costume, it's really funny. They're in a great bow tie backstage like this. He's like turning the page. <laughs> <laughs> but, no. you know, everyone's a part of the show. Well, yeah. I actually, um, I was really struck by that during dress rehearsal when I came in to see what these works looked like in this space. And, um, and I thought, it's just you guys. I mean, there's not somebody, there's not the outside eye coaching. It's you guys assisting each other. Or tr what if you try the lift this way? Or... I got to figure out how to get off stage over here because, you know, the f traffic patterns. W could you, maybe Sterling, you could say something about what it's like to not have somebody on the house microphone saying, uh, try that a little more upstage and just negotiating with each other. You know, I think we've all, we're all so seasoned that honestly, we can all help one another mm -hmm. so much. We all, we're all at a great place in our careers where we, we really have seen a lot and we've experienced a lot. So yeah. we're pretty self-sufficient at and this point. And we've also all grown up together. We're not perfect. Way, so you don't, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we also feel comfor comfortable enough to say to each other and feel open that you'll take our, my opinion on how to fix things mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I'll take hers or Jared's or whoever. I mean, we've all grown at the same point and in the same way. So well, I and awesome. I mean, I saw you driving the minivan yesterday, so... I, yeah, it's drive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dad on He's tour. dad. <laughs> I'm dad. I do the laundry, though. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm mom, then. I do the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> I do the dishes. <laughs> she does the dishes, yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful house. You know? <laughs> so I just want to um, pause for a moment to say uh, something about the Wielden, or have you say something about it, because uh, none of... I mean... Like, how do you not all want to be in that dance all the time? All so of us want to do yeah. it. So, so, yeah. so, I mean, it actually, you don't have Peter Martins for putting up the cast list. It's what you guys are negotiating, or maybe it falls to you to uh, break the heart of one of your friends and say you're not, you're not in it at this show. Could you just say something about um, Well, I cast it. Uh -huh. I mean, I cast it and program it. Mm -hmm. And the challenge is, um, you know, to, to really manage uh, the size of a show. You know, I could hire 40 people. Sure. That's like 20 vans, though. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, I, the challenge is uh, to really find the scale. And I think for me to find within each one of these artists here, you saw them do two pieces tonight. Mm -hmm. So you saw, it's like a prism. You look at them a different way through a different mm -hmm. piece of light, and you see, I mean, I'm going to go to Jeff and Amar just because of uh, distractions. Mm -hmm. it, it was both a debuts for them. You saw Jeff tear up the stage in Le Luten. You saw Amar, who brought a complete different sensibility with In the Night, and then you saw them completely dance the hell out of distractions. Mm -hmm. And so for me, the fun part is giving them that challenge. And, you know, it's not about me. This show is not about me. This is about the craft and the art form and the people who deliver it the most genuinely. And I feel that when I, when I watch. I watch In the Night from this wing right here every night. And I look on stage, and I kid you not, I, and I said it to you guys the first night, and I said, I looked in your eyes, and you cared what you're doing. Mm -hmm. That's the yep. biggest mm -hmm. uh, honor. And they could be gigging all over the world, and they could be doing vacation, or honeymoons, or <laughs> you know, camping in the forest here, or whatever. <laughs> but they've said yes to me. And that is the biggest honor. Yeah.